I'll go ahead and crank up Python so you can follow along with what we're doing. The purpose of this video is going to be to introduce you to the random library and some of its ability to simulate experiments. Actually, just simple experiments. Later, we'll simulate, we will simulate more complex experiments when we have looping under control. So, to use the random library, begin by importing random. Now, if, let's take a look and see what's inside using our friend Dur. Dur allows us to see inside of some of the things that, uh, I mean, in, inside of what's in the library. So let's go ahead and do this. Random dot uh, shuffle dot double underscore doc double underscore. Oh, let's print it because it's not very pretty if you have the new line characters just sitting there. So I'm going to go ahead and say print this. It'll look prettier. Okay. Shuffle a list in place and return none. So this has really no return value because it returns none and it has the side effect of shuffling the list in place. Okay, now what a Yes, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a list. Let's make a list here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why not? And to shuffle it, you just say this. And now the, the, the actual list has been shuffled. Its order has been shuffled. If we do this again, uh, It'll be in a different order. So that's random.shuffle. Now random.choice, let's look at that. Okay, and I'm going to get out its doc string. And I'm going to go ahead and print that so it's pretty. Oop, print. Let's get rid of that extra Y. Why not? All right. Choose a random element from a non-empty sequence. So, let's try this. Let's give it a string and see what it does. Hey, look at that. So, because a string as a sequence is considered a sequence of characters, it's going to return some element from the sequence, so it will return a single character. It can also be used on a list. Watch this, random dot choice of H T. Ooh, I need to make a list in here. Let us do that. Okay, so this is flippage of a coin, okay? So you can flip a coin using the random library. Now, one thing that's of interest is random.randint. Let's go ahead and print random.randint, double underscore doc, double underscore, and see what it says. Returns a random integer in the range A, B, including both endpoints. Now, I assume most of you who have played the lovely game of Monopoly out there. And when you play Monopoly, how does that work? You throw a pair of dice. And both of the numbers in that toss are important. Because if you get doubles, if you get through threes, then you must make another turn. You must go again. So we want all the information about that toss to come out. So here's one way you could do it. Throw the bones, all right. I'm gonna make a function right here. Uh, I'm gonna say return. I'm gonna make a tuple that's gonna have random.randint of one six comma random 
dot randint of one six. Now, oh, I misspelled that. Fortunately, this is just an interactive session, but you can see I rolled a seven right there, a one and a six, five and a two, an eight, a seven, a nine, okay, a four or five, a six and a three. That's a less common thing to appear, a five, a six, okay? So you can throw the bones. Here, let's keep going until we get, oh, there we go. We got doubles. So if we were sitting on just visiting, we would be on, we would next be on free parking and we would throw the dice again and hopefully our opponent doesn't have hotels on the yellow monopoly or life could become a little bit unpleasant. So here's a way to do another, you know, that's another simple experiment. We just tossed a fair coin. Um, if you want uniform variates, oh, what is a uniform variate? A uniform variate is a number between 0 and 1, a random number between 0 and 1. And to do that, that's very simple. And you will get a number that's greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. Okay? So you can go like that. Look at that. Okay? And these all look pretty, you know, they look pretty random. They're, they're just numbers between 0 and 1. So random.random will do that for you. Um, and let's check out random.sample because that's kind of a cool thing. You know, suppose there are five people in your class. Oh, here, let's make a class list. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll throw in Beyonce, RuPaul, and Ataturk. All right, so we got some people in this class. Okay, and I want to pick out two of them at random. I can go like this. Uh, Ross, oh, roster, yeah. Uh, a random dot sample, sorry. A roster and two, if I want two people. And it will pick two people out of the list at random. Ataturk and Beyonce, that's quite a mix. RuPaul and Ataturk, there's another interesting mix. So, random dot sample will pick a subsample out of a list. And then you could, you know, if you wanted to make split a class in two and make teams, you know, and pair people, you can see that this would be a kind of a useful thing to, to uh, have at your disposal. So these are ways of using the random library to do very, very simple little experiments like throwing two dice or throwing three dice. Later, we'll learn something about system, stochastic system simulation, and that will come after we do looping. But for now, you have a nice little mechanism for picking random stuff.